Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kristen and today I will be unboxing some new paper. Awesome. Lovely paper, I like that. Okay, so yes, this is from Eric Small Things or Cute Things from Japan. I really like this. This wrapping paper with washi, washi tape. I watched a video by Inky Rocks called the best paper of the last 1500 years. And I think I've seen that video at least three times already. And that video has influenced me to make this purchase from Cute Things from Japan. Okay, so let's go through each of these items. So this is the Stenai Washi paper. It says that it's ruled. Okay, so this is the cover. A little wrapping, but it is ruled mental pad paper. So yeah. So it is perforated, so I can just tear it off if I need to. So this one is made from washi and recycled materials. And you can see that it is lined paper. The lines on the paper are green. This is 10 millimeter line height or one centimeter line height on this paper. But I just love the look and the feel of this paper is quite nice. Uh, it's a bit rougher on the back than it is on the front. And I will do a little bit of testing with some of my pens and, and pencils. And so this next one is New Gray. It's a notepad as well. It's plain paper. There are no lines on this one, but it is gray paper. So this is a white coloring card to give you better idea or better understanding of this white versus the gray. So it is, it's not quite as stark as it appears in the camera. Let's see if I can find something that is white. So it's just a bit softer than this white ink journal pad. What is this paper? This is the Endless Regalia paper and this is white. That is gray. Let me show you this gray next to cream paper. So this is really nice paper, very smooth. Um, it feels the same on the front and back. And this last one, which is also in a vellum envelope, is called Torinoko Washi Paper. And this one is white. So if I can put this one next to the gray paper, it is lighter than the gray paper as well. So this is the Stenai Washi Paper Memo Pad. It is also ruled 17 millimeters. Yeah, this is a 17 millimeter line height. So you can fit quite a bit of information <laughs> between each of these lines. And there are little dots on the left side and the right side of each line. And just like the composite washi paper, there is a smooth side and a rougher side. So the smoother side is, uh, I guess I'm guessing the smoother side is what you use to actually write on this rougher side. I'm not sure how it would respond to your writing utensils and inks and, and other materials. Okay, so we've got all three of these notepads. Oh, so kind. Oh, I like these. I like this paper, it's really nice. We have this. It's just one sheet. It's a bit thicker, or it feels thicker than I expected. This is quite nice. And I first thought that these were actual berries, but it's, it looks like a rose. Look like roses. Travel Japan with cute things from Japan. Oh, that's nice. Okay, I'll definitely read this at a later time but that's pretty cool to receive these really thoughtful items from cute things from japan so yes these are the washi papers and this is the gray paper nice <laughs> 
not a hassle at all. It was very nice, very seamless tear. Do I need to actually, it might help to, um, it might help to bend the paper at the perforation. So let's do that here. It folds very easily. Ooh. It still takes a little bit more intention to tear these two papers, the washi, from the memo pad. I think because of the fibers in these papers, they're still a bit, they like each other. So tearing might, tearing quickly and haphazardly might end up um, ripping the paper in unintended areas. So let's start off with permanent black ink. So far, so good. I don't see any feathering. This is actually pretty cool, even if it's a bit rough. The pencil is probably the the smoothest writing experience that I've had so far. There is a little bit of feathering going on with the Pilot Metropolitan. This is a wetter ink. I believe it's just like Pilot Black, or it was it was just like the typical cartridge that comes with your Pilot fountain pens. So yeah, it is feathering just a little bit. And I can see it trying to bleed through on the back as well, right there. And I do see a little bit of ghosting with the other inks. So this is, so this is Platinum Carbon Black, and this is the Inner Gel, the gel pen. The pencil, I can barely see anything on the other side of the paper. And I could definitely see something feathering and trying to bleed through on this last one, that juicy black ink in the Pilot Metropolitan. Okay, this is Tom's Studio number 17, Damson. So the first thing I wanna do is just test out my dip pen on this paper. So it's not unpleasant to write with it, but there is quite a bit of ink going down on the paper, which means it is possible that this could feather before it dries completely. So what would happen if I actually put a swatch on this paper? Look at that. I actually really like the color of this ink on this paper. What? Nothing. At least nothing so far. So Tom's Studio Damson actually looks really good on this paper. It's not completely crisp because just because of the nature of this paper but it still looks really really good so i think with fountain pen ink it really depends on the ink itself the ink's properties and i would love to explore this a little bit further to see what kind of inks actually do well on this paper and which ones you should actually avoid but this whole swatch right here is looking really good even as it dries it is mostly crisp it doesn't bleed like I thought that it would on here. So I wanna do the same thing on these other two papers. So of course, so far, the gray paper, the new gray notepad paper does feel much more smooth with each tool. I actually like the feel of the pencil on this washi paper. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so, <laughs> and this was something that I was very curious about. I suspect that this gray paper, this new gray notepad paper is sensitive to hand oils. This little spot right here, that little lighter area right there, that lighter area and this little bit right there as well. It looked like those were the areas that were kind of resisting the ink. And I think that's where I actually touched the paper and the oils and lotions on my hands probably impacted the way that the ink absorbs into the paper. It does look really, really good on the other side. And this washi paper is almost completely dry. There is only like one slightly damp area right here where the ink pooled, but it's mostly dry. It dries pretty quickly on here. And this is pretty dry. It's still a bit damp to the touch. Like you can tell that the papers aren't completely dry, but I can turn it over and not worry about, you know, it transferring immediately to another piece of paper. So you can see the ghosting of this ink swatch here from the, from the brush. And you can also see a little bit of the other writing samples 
as well. The only thing that you can barely see is the pencil that's right here going across between the, those two writing samples. But it's not bad. I actually really love the feel of this washi paper. The, it, it feels so good. It feels so good. I like the feel of that paper. This is actually not bad either, but I really like the smoothness of this gray paper and the soft fibers. And it's, this is some really thin washi. When you see, when I typically see, um, I guess you want to call it composite papers or papers with larger fibers and, and specks and things like this in them. It's typically thicker paper and very stiff and for me, very unpleasant to touch and use, but this is actually really nice. I love how the paper feels. They're so thin and they are textured. This is, this is highly textured, um, even more so on the back. Actually, I should try the back, try writing on the back and see what happens. But yeah, okay, so we saw the back of that one. Let's look at the back of this and you'll see, let me bring it closer so you can see the back of this paper. You can see the ghosting of pretty much everything, including the lines on the paper. Very much so, but nothing bled through and it doesn't look like there's anything that's feathering. This Pilot Metropolitan with that black ink looks to be a bit rough around the edges, but it's not major feathering. It's just not as crisp as the Tom's Studio Damson appears. And here is the gray paper. I really like this gray paper. I love the feel of it, but I also like the fact that it's just a little bit more muted than your typical white paper. It's much softer on my eyes. And these inks look gorgeous on the paper. Even in the places where the oil kind of affected the ink, I still really like this. I want to test out an ink that kind of appears different depending on the paper that you use. Okay, so the ink I was referencing is Tasia Sabimidori. This ink is absolutely gorgeous. It is one of my favorite inks. It appears teal on Tamoy River paper, but it appears, let me make sure. Let me, let me make sure, cause I don't want to be telling you falsehoods. Okay, so here is Tasia Sabimidori. And this is actually also Tom's Studio Damson, which I just swatched. So we're gonna go ahead and, so I'm gonna go ahead and swatch Tasia Sabimidori here. Uh, so this is the color on Tomoe River paper. It's got a teal, -y, it's like a bluish teal color with a red sheen on Tomoe River paper. On Iroho paper, it looks quite blue with that coppery red sheen. Yamamoto Bank paper, it looks a bit more green with a heavy coppery red sheen. Cosmo Air Light, it's back to being blue with a heavy red sheen. Midori, it is back to that teal color with a softer red sheen. So yes, depending on the paper, Sabi Midori could look teal or it could look blue. And I would really love to see how these papers respond to an ink like this one. Mm. I really like how the glass nib feels on this paper. And so Tasi Sabi Midori on this composite paper it goes down blue, but it's drying down to a teal color. You can see where the glass dip nib laid down ink, it is already teal and it is getting lighter and lighter as it dries. It looks like it's appearing the same way here. It goes down like a bright blue, but it dries down to a softer teal color. I don't see very much sheen on any of these papers so far. There is a little bit of sheen that I can see showing up on the gray paper. I think I'm gonna have another favorite. So Iroful is one of my favorite papers. Tomoe River is just, it's so readily available and it does it very well. 
with inks as well but like my favorite tactile and visual experience that i've had so far is with iroful paper and with cosmo air light paper and this one looks like it's going to give me that same type of experience look at that I love how the red sheen is actually showing up so very subtly here. And it's looking really good here. The paper does buckle a bit under like, so you can see like it's actually bending under the weight <laughs> right at that spot where the ink is still wet and affecting the paper. Now I'm going to use some other fountain pens just to get a better understanding of what it feels like to write on these papers. Yeah. So this one is not as pleasant. Yeah, it's not as pleasant of a writing experience, at least with fountain pens, not uh, that one. I think with these two papers, I would probably use them to either write notes, letters to other people. Um, I really like how that looks green right there. That's pretty cool. Mm hmm. Let me bring out a sheet of Iroful paper so that I can compare it with my favorite. This is quite interesting. Okay, so with Iroful paper, my writing, it the lines are thicker when I write on Iroful paper. There is quite a bit of drag, not so much that it's impossible to write on the paper, but there is a noticeable drag whenever I write on Iroful paper. In contrast, there is basically no drag when I'm writing on this gray paper. I am so excited about using this paper. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so the lines are thinner on this gray paper than they are on the Aeroful paper. It is a bit rougher if I just look specifically at this Sailor 2024 Pen Show ink that is in my Pilot Custom N23. The line is rougher. Um, I can see just very slight feathering on this washi paper and there is a little bit more feathering that I see on this other washi paper here. So I wonder if the hand oils are also impacting the amount of feathering that I see on this paper. So if I like, let's see, <laughs> if I like rub some lotion <laughs> onto this paper, what would happen if I wrote in this area now? I'm just trying to see if that would affect the way that the ink goes down or whether or not there is an extra amount of feathering on this paper, but I can't really tell. There is still a good bit of feathering, but then again, I think that more ink went down, actually flowed from this pen on these two writing samples than they did down here at the bottom. Okay, so I do want to write on the opposite sides of these two washi papers because I know that the textures are different on the backs of these. Here it is on the back of this Denai washi paper. I actually kind of like how it feels on the back of that paper. Hmm. This is a very interesting feedback. So it's not like I'm writing on like gritty paper. Like there is roughness. There is a bit of texture here, but it doesn't feel like I'm writing on, on gritty paper. It actually feels like I'm writing on fabric almost. So it's like a little bit of lumpy bumpiness rather than sharp scraping feel. And so that's actually quite a unique sensation on the back of this one it is still quite pleasant as well it's not an uncomfortable feeling to write on the backs of these papers so you are able to see it on the back but it does not bleed through there's a slight bit of roughness it doesn't look like it's feathering but it just looks rough because of the texture of the paper and so if I bring this one over here as well it just looks rough it doesn't look like it's bleeding. It just looks a, a bit rough. And you can also see a hint of some ghosting on the front of the paper as well. But so yeah, these are really nice. I think I would use these for letters and notes, of course, which is why I bought them as memo pads to just use it as paper that I need in the spur of the moment. Or if I want to write a letter to someone, I will use one of these papers. This right here is just so good. Oh my gosh, I might want a book or something like a notebook or something with this new gray paper. This is quite nice. I could also use this to write letters as well, but I feel like I really want this to be incorporated into my daily life a little bit more. 
because it's just so good. Okay, so, so if I take a look at some more river paper swatch of Sabi Midori and this gray paper, it is more green than you see on the Tomoe River paper. If I go to the bank paper, that's just blue over there on Aeroflow paper. But if I go to bank paper, it actually looks quite similar to what I see on the bank paper. There's a lot more green here on the bank paper, although it's slightly more blue than it is on this gray paper. But I think that might be the closest. I think that might be the closest unless it's... No, it's about the same. So I think... The chromo shading and interesting qualities that you would see on an ink will probably be more close to what you would see on bank paper. Now this has me wondering about other chromo shading inks. Sumiyoshi Brown. I was down here. Okay. Sumiyoshi Brown. So if I look at... Oh goodness. Crinkle. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. These papers don't want to cooperate now that they've been wet. Well, now that they've been flooded with ink. So if we see like the, this ink right here, Sailor South Carolina is different on all three papers and Sumiyoshi Brown by Kobe. Kobe ink number 40, Sumiyoshi Brown looks like three different inks here as well. I would love to see inks like this. Like what colors would actually be drawn out on this gray paper? I am excited. Oh my gosh. Is this like A5, A5, like for real A5? Oh gosh. So the only issue that I have with this gray paper is that it's only A5 while it's still part of the memo pad. But once you tear it out, you are getting rid of like a good inch of this paper. I mean, I could still use it for my ink swatching, but I would be missing like that much of the paper. That's unfortunate, but it looks good. I didn't try any shimmer inks. Okay, I don't think I can leave before I test out my favorite shimmer ink. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And so it will be pretty interesting to try this gray purple ink on this lovely gray paper. So I think that I'm excited to do this one. Okay, so the first one, let's take a look at that. It is very difficult to capture the shimmer of Colorist Iris Nebula on this paper, the Stenai paper. The Torinoco paper is very subtle here as well. I don't know if you can see it. Let me know if you can. But it's very cool. I kind of like it here. The brush looked like it was kind of struggling a little bit, but it could be also the fact that those bristles were catching a little bit on the fibers of the paper as well as having a rougher time um, with the shimmer particles. Here, oh my goodness, I think you can see it here even before it completely dries, but the shimmer on here just looks so good. It looks good, it looks good, it looks good. And I can see that there is definitely like more ink was able to, to make it down on this paper than on the Torinoco paper and this Denai paper. Look at Sabi Midori. Sabi Midori looks so good on all three of these papers. But I am most excited to explore and experience this new gray notepad paper. Oh, that's so good. I'm most excited about this one, but I will definitely still have a use for these papers, whether it be for um, giving some of this away to let others experience the joy of washi paper, or if I'm going to be writing letters on here or making artwork with this or collages or things like that. I think those would also be pretty cool. Let me see. How do they rip? How do they tear? What do they, what do they do when you try and like rip one of these? I'm not going to try the gray paper because it just feels like your typical paper. And I don't want to waste that one. <laughs> but I do think that with these, if I just try to... Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Let me get these out of the way so you can kind of see what's going on with this. Yes. I actually really like... I like that effect where you can have like that rough handmade paper type look and feel with by just ripping this paper. Oh, nice. So nice. So nice. And it's very pleasant. Like this paper just 
it bends to your will unless you're like bending over one of the the larger chunks that is suspended in this paper but you can get a more fuzzy but still slightly more accurate tear if you crease it ahead of time and i'm assuming that it's going to be the same experience here with this paper it's really nice it doesn't have larger chunks of paper in this one so it seems to cooperate even better than the the one with recycled paper in the mix but it still gives you like that fuzzy edge if you like that now if i were to just tear yeah so you do get that softer more fibrous edge if you would like to do some of that kind of thing with your collages and and all that kind of stuff so oh this is what you can do with washi <laughs> These are some of the things that you can do with washi and I'm excited to do to to just try and play with paper and all of that and I I just want to write on here. I want to explore inks on here. I'm I'm excited about this paper. So, this is my favorite out of all three. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Let me know if you have ever tried any of these papers from Cute Things from Japan. So, again, this is the new gray notepad paper. This is the Stenai washi paper, the ruled memo pad. And this is the Torinoko washi paper notepad. It's A5 ruled paper as well. Let me know if you have tried any of these papers or any other washi paper and what have your experiences been with these papers. I hope you have a great day and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.